I'm Dr. Charles Dactus. I'm an interventional pain management physician here at Spine and Pain Centers of New Jersey and New York. I did my fellowship training in interventional pain management at Harvard University's Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And prior to that, I was at Albany Medical Center for anesthesia and neurosurgery. Welcome to my video series on interventional pain management technique. I hope over the course of this series, we get to understand pain management techniques and how they can help to restore your function and restore your quality of life. I look forward to seeing you and working with you. Hello, today we're going to talk about epidural steroid administration. At some point, you may find that one of the physicians at Spine and Pain tells you you need an epidural steroid administration. And the question may be, what is epidural steroids? Uh, we hear a lot about this technique in the media, and people may wonder what exactly is being done. What an epidural steroid administration is, is a deposit of steroid medication into the space surrounding the spinal cord and spinal nerves. This can be done in the lumbar spine, as I'm depicting here in this model, or it could be done in the cervical spine. Now, the lumbar spine is the low back. The cervical spine is the neck. Also, in the thoracic spine, steroids can be applied, and that's the middle portion of our spine. Now, why do we do epidural steroids? Epidural steroids are used to help with inflamed nerve tissue or an inflamed disc. Your doctor may tell you you have a slipped disc or a herniated disc. Steroid medication can be applied to help reduce the swelling and inflammation from that disc. Also, individuals that suffer from arthritis of the spine can have a condition called spinal stenosis. And that condition causes compression of the nerves and can also cause swelling of the nerves and pain in the back, neck, upper extremities, as well as lower extremities. Epidural steroids are used to help with these symptoms as well. Now, how is this procedure done? Well, the procedure is done in a room very much like the one I'm sitting in, a procedure room. This can be in a surgical facility or right here at our offices at Spine and Pain Medicine. The technique is very simple and is done as an outpatient basis. The patient comes to this room or to a room like this, and generally they lay on the table in the prone position that's on their stomach. We apply some of the monitors you may see around this room, blood pressure, EKG monitoring, a little pulse ox to monitor the oxygen level in their blood. And then you may ask me, why would I want to have this done when I'm wide awake? Well, it's not a very painful technique. The skin is anesthetized with the local anesthetic. And most people find that it's very easy to go through with just a slight pinch and then the skin goes numb. Sometimes, however, people are nervous about getting a shot somewhere near their spine. And we can provide sedation services. Uh, oral sedation, such as Valium or uh, a sister drug to Valium, or intravenous sedation can be provided in one of our surgical facilities. However, the technique is quite quick and largely painless. When we place the uh, needle into the appropriate space, as I'll demonstrate here, we're not actually going into the spine itself. The needle goes into the space on top of the spine, or spinal cord or spinal coverings, and that's called the epidural space. So the common misconception that we're putting a needle into the spine is not something that is actually happening. Once the needle is appropriately positioned using this x-ray equipment you see behind me, the physician will then inject a contrast. It's a dye that we can see that the medication is going into the right spot. Once we're happy with the needle positioning and the contrast is spreading to where the affected nerves or disc material is, we then will inject our steroid medication. And that steroid medication can vary. There are several different types of steroids. And if this technique is something that you need to go through, your doctor will talk with you about what steroid is going to be injected. Once the injection is complete, the needle is removed, and our nursing staff will take you to the recovery area where you'll recover from the procedure, and you'll go home that same day. The question is what to expect after an epidural steroid. And I commonly get questions of how long will this procedure last, or what will I feel immediately afterwards? Well, the technique for the first couple of days can actually make you sore. You have a little needle stick site in your back, so the muscle may be a little bit sore. You may have some redness or even some bruising around where the needle went in. Usually that goes away in about two to three days. At the three-day mark is when the steroid really starts to become effective. And you can start to see relief as early as three days. But generally, between five and seven days is when our maximal effect 
from steroid medications is seen. It's at that point, we'll usually have you come back to the office for a follow-up visit, somewhere between 10 and 14 days. At that point, the physician will examine you, and I'll take a look at the wound site, examine your neurologic exam, and make sure that you're feeling better at that point. Uh, that's basically it for epidural steroids. They can be very effective. Generally, about 70% of the time, we get good reduction in symptoms with the diagnoses that I've discussed already. One of the questions I get regarding epidural steroids is, what are the risks of this procedure? And the risks can be categorized as follows. Risks at the skin site can include bleeding or infection. Generally, this is minor. There can be some bruising or redness after the needle stick. Risks at the spinal level can include a spinal headache. This is quite rare. It is much like a headache that a lady might get after an epidural for labor. It can be treated very easily and generally is more of an inconvenience than a true neurologic threat, but it can be quite a profound headache. Lastly, there can be difficulties with steroid itself, and this can include elevations of levels of glucose or blood sugar for people that are diabetic. And also, sometimes there can be difficulties with suppression of the actual production of steroid naturally within the patient's body. The last difficulty we can see with steroid is sometimes water retention. However, all of these side effects from steroid are generally mild or not seen. Other risks at the spinal level can include nerve irritation or nerve damage. However, these are really more theoretical risks and are extremely rare. Overall, epidural steroid administration is an extremely safe technique and quite effective. However, this technique does not work all the time. And for individuals that do not see relief with epidural steroid administration, we can have other techniques that we can offer to them, as well as medication management, rehabilitation, strength training, chiropractic uh, evaluation and treatments, and other modalities. I hope this has been helpful in trying to understand what epidural steroid administration is, how it's performed here at Spine and Pain Centers, and how I do the technique. This is generally an informational video uh, for patient education. Now, specific cases may vary, and I would encourage you to discuss your problems with me or one of the other physicians here at Spine and Pain. Thanks very much for your attention today. I look forward to seeing you soon.